to wait unspeakable things you've done fix your eyes on the mountain let the past be dead and gone come on saints and sinners you can't outrun god whatever you've done can't overcome the power of the blood if you're lost and wandering come stumbling in like a prodigal child see the So let the chains fall. 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 Like a prodigal child, see the walls start crumbling. Let the gates of glory open wide. If you're lost, then to get come stumbling in. Like a prodigal child, see the walls start crumbling. Let the gates of glory open wide. Let the gates of glory. How are y'all doing? It's good to see you guys. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Who ate too much? Who ate twice? Three times? Anybody? All right. That sounds like me. I was stuffed, but uh, good to see you guys. We just want to welcome you guys. I know a lot of you may be in from out of town visiting family or something for the holidays. Uh, and if you're guests with us this morning, we're so glad you're here. And um, we do have a gift for you guys as well. Even if, it's, if you're out of town, you're never coming back here again. We still have a gift for you guys this morning. We're so honored to have you. Uh, in your worship guide, you'll see there is a, a, what we call a connection card here at the Point Church. And if you could fill that out for us, uh, we just want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for being our guest. Uh, when you go outside, you'll drop it off. There, we've got a gift for you guys. So, um, again, we're so honored to have you. First, second, or third time visitors, that's for you guys. But uh, we're also glad to have all of our usuals here. Um, let's do this. We're getting ready to jump back into some music, but um, I said this in the first service because I know you guys absolutely love it. We're going to high five seven people. <laughs> seven people before we go. You ready? Seven people. Let's go. High five seven people. Any overachievers? Who did eight? There we go. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put our hands together. Y'all ready? We need some help this morning. Here we go. Oh, we look to the sun. Set our eyes on the Savior. See the image of love. Sing his praises forever.
reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God, beyond the skies above, the reaching out. to the 
going to teach you guys a new song this morning. The words will be on the screen so you guys join in and sing it out.
promise still stands. Lord, great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my comfort. failed us, God. No, you never failed me yet. You never fail us, and you never failed us yet. Let's go sing that bridge one more time. Because I've seen you. Because I've seen you move. You move and I believe I see you do it again you made a way when there was no way and I believe I see you do it again I've seen you move you move the mountains and I believe I see you do it again you made a way when there no way and I believe I'll see you do it again Amen, do you believe that today? Let's pray together Heavenly Father we thank you we thank you that, that you have brought us to this place at this time. We thank you that you are meeting us right where we're at. And for some of us, we're trying to understand who you are. We're asking big questions. For some of us, we're, we're that, that prodigal that we, we've run away from you and, and we kicked you to the curb, but you haven't kicked us to the curb. some of us we continue to look back where you made a way where no way could be made and you continue to make a way and father as we come collectively together we ask that that you will take our worship that we've done to you that, that you will bless that that our hearts will be lifted up and you will speak to us. Help us to encounter you in such a way that our lives will be changed. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You guys can have a seat. You know, as we think about worship, and for us here at the point, we, we bring together the, the concept of worship and, and giving together unashamedly because we believe that that giving is an act of worship that when we give God our first and best that 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 is worship and when we give our time when we give our talent and when we give our of our resources and so we talk about giving here unashamedly because because Jesus talked about where our, where our treasure is that's where our heart is and so, so we believe our hearts with the kingdom of God, and we want to be generous people uh, because, because God's blessed us so much. And so we honor God first and foremost with our giving, and we worship him through that. And so there's multiple ways to give here at the Point Church. One is you can grab an envelope, and, and you can simply uh, fill that out and drop that in the offering plate when it comes, in the offering basket when it comes by in just a few minutes. If you're on, online, you can go to our website, and you can... Uh, uh, simply click give and you'll be able to give there. You can do that right now on your smartphone or you can text to give again on your smartphone and you'll be prompted on, on how to make that happen. But we give to honor God, but here's what you need to know. Our giving makes a difference. I'm going to go ahead and ask the First Impression team to come on down. One of the partners that we come along with, alongside with, is called Convoy of Hope. And, and, and granted, our Convoy of Hope and what we did impacted locally uh, back last May with some of our giving through our Christmas offering, through our Easter offering. But we were able to give in such a way that made a, made a larger impact in devastated places. So take a look at this.
Where are we at today? I think we're about four weeks removed from the uh, hurricane, but where are things today? Here in Puerto Rico, it's, you know, it's been, it's been a hard grind. We have 11 major distribution centers around the island, and from there, we're reaching out to other communities. Uh, the total is around 70 communities that we've reached through those 11 hubs. Thanks to Convoy of Hope, there's no bureaucracy, there's no technicalities. We're just going straight to the families, door by door. Uh, thank God for Convoy of Hope. You are the first response in this area. Had it not been for a Convoy of Hope, uh, truly we wouldn't have had the tools. So Hal, two major earthquakes struck here and uh, literally it impacted hundreds of thousands of lives and today uh, they estimate at least a half a million people are homeless and displaced, but the reality is hope is on the rise. Because of our network of partners, we've been able to distribute 98,000 meals already. We just believe that good things are happening because people are reaching out in kindness. Today we're in Port Arthur, Texas, doing cleanup and debris removal of homes that were flooded. This whole neighborhood had about two feet of water in it. Not only are the volunteers doing the tear out, but it's all coming out here. We're loading in a truck and we're doing the haul off. So we're doing the full deal here. Convoy of Hope came out when no other entity came out. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> we would be stuck without you guys. And, um, and this is a long-term project, so we still need your help. To date, Stacy, what have we been able to accomplish here in Texas? Just here, we've had over 160 tractor trailer loads of resources delivered, which has allowed us to serve over a quarter million individuals um, with over five million pounds of resources. It was complete devastation. Windows were blown out, roofs were ripped off, everything inside was soaking wet. For the level of devastation, it's surprising that only five people died. This is amazing. How did all this happen? Thanks to an amazing donor, we were able to get a 300-foot ship full of $2 million worth of supplies. Right now, we have teams making meals every day for the children of this island. Irma came up from the southwest in this town here called Flagler Beach. It was kind of like right in the crosshairs of Irma coming up from the south and the band of rain coming in from the Atlantic, and it landed right here. Ever since the inception of Irma, we've been distributing resources throughout the entire state. You know, it was heavy in the news for the first week, and after that, it, it disappears from the media quickly, but it doesn't mean that the need has disappeared. This is going to take a while to recover from this. This isn't just fixing your roof yeah. and moving back in your home. And like I said, we could not have done it without Convoy of Hope. You were just our knight in shining armor. And so because of your giving and because we're generous people, we, we've been able to play a part of that. And because of your giving through last year's Christmas offering, through the Easter offering, we've been able to do, do things way beyond the four walls of our church. Because of your generosity, you play a part of that. People's lives are being changed in the here and now. People's lives are changed forever because of your generosity. So thank you so much. And I just want to let you know that we, we have begun our season of our Christmas offering. And there's ways that you can give. You can grab an envelope uh, next week and simply write Christmas offering on that envelope. You can go online. And there's a drop-down menu online where you can give to be able to, to designate directly to our Christmas offering. And we've got some things on the horizon that we're going to do that we're going to partner with. We've got some things going on down in Guatemala that we're going to come alongside with in terms of orphans here uh, and foster children here in Gaston County, things that we're going to be doing and be a part of as well as some of our normal ministry partners. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for making an impact on people's lives. Now, you may be expecting Pastor Ray at this moment of our service. He's not here today, and uh, my name is Doug, and I'm one of the pastors, and I'm thrilled to be speaking today. And so I, as, as we come through Thanksgiving, I don't know about you guys, but my family, we put up a Christmas tree right after Thanksgiving. I don't know if you guys do, but uh, we got some lights up, we got a Christmas tree up, and, and I'm excited about Christmas. Now, I know, I know um, that Christmas time can be a really hard time. 
I get that. Um, it can be a very, very difficult time. For some of us, we're kind of bent that, that we're excited. Some of us have looked at life, and life has come in on hard, so hard, and it's really hard to, to look at Christmas. But I do want to let you know that Christmas time is a great time for you to invite your friends who don't go to church, who need some hope, who need some direction in their life. So your friends who don't know God and aren't in a relationship with them, Christmas time is a great time to invite them to come to church. And it's actually, I'll let you in on a little bit of secret, it's actually the best time to invite them. Unchurched people, people who don't go to church, are more likely to come at Christmas than they are Easter, believe it or not. And so uh, Christmas time is a great time for you to invite your friends and family. We know that. We're expecting you to do that and uh, so that people can hear the hope of Jesus in, in a way that will bring transformation to their life, to your life. And so this year, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Pastor Ray's not here, so I'm going to call Audible, and I'm going to let you in on this. We're having three services at Christmas time. All right, the first service is going to be on Saturday, Saturday the 23rd at 4 o'clock. Now, we're going to have a uh, normal service in here. Kids, uh, Kids Point will be the same. We'll be doing kids ministry back there in all three services. Each service is identical. So it's going to be 4 o'clock on Saturday, and then it'll be at 9 o'clock and 1030 on Sunday, normal time. So we're doing three services on Christmas, one on Christmas Eve Eve at 4 o'clock on Saturday, and then two on Sunday morning, our regular time, 9 and 10.30. Okay, so, and kids' points the same. And so, now, here's the question. Some of you guys are early adopters. Some of you guys are thinking, I know you got to talk to your wives if you need to do that, or to your husbands, and you got family members. But if you're just sitting here thinking, if Saturday sounds like a really good option, do me a favor, throw your hand up. Awesome, I see those hands. See, you guys are early adopters. Look around, look at those people. They're early adopters. They're all in. They like that different. All right, so uh, we're excited about that. Uh, like us on Facebook. You'll see more about that information. We'll be talking about it more in our services. It's definitely in the inserts in your worship guide. You need to be looking at that, by the way, every week because we have things that are going on that we can't stand up here and talk about specifically, but that information's in that worship guide. We put it there to help you take next steps in your spiritual journey with Jesus, so you need to be looking at those things each and every week. So, Christmas time. Let me pause and say, I'm, Christmas time's a month away. I mean, I, I don't even know what I want, much less what anybody else wants for Christmas. I don't know about you. You got a Christmas list? You got it going? I don't know. But it's, it's, it's coming short. But before we kind of delve into Christmas, I want to look back at Thanksgiving. I want to take a look backward at Thanksgiving. And I want you to think about Thanksgiving Day. And I want you to think about the week of Thanksgiving where we were talked about being thankful. And Pastor Ray uh, uh, spoke last week about thanks living and about the significance of that. If you missed that last week, I encourage you to go uh, join us on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, uh, The Point CC. You can, you can check us out there. It, we're on our, our website as well. You can go to Facebook and see it there as well. But you need to check that out, Thanks Living, and as we're going to delve into that even more today, so I want you to check this video out.
Thanks, Libby. You know, I don't know about you, but I kind of enjoyed last week. I thought that was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I, I did a, I didn't do any shopping shopping. I mean, I went to the grocery store like I normally do. Of course, I don't do that all the time. But I do sometimes go to the grocery store, go to the convenience store, stop by in there, um, or, or go. And, and I'll tell you, seeing people, crossing paths with people, it was really neat for them to look at me and, and me look at them, and they would start the conversation by saying, Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. And so uh, I have the great privilege, uh, by the way, of, of working a second shift at Operation Christmas Child during the processing season. Uh, the church allows me to do that, kind of like going on a mission trip. And so uh, I, I saw a lot of people uh, last week uh, doing that process, and, and everybody would see me, and, and, and when they saw me, they would say, Happy Thanksgiving. Made me feel good. Happy Thanksgiving. You know, I don't know about you. It made me feel good, I, and I like that. And, and when we, we talk about Thanksgiving, I know Thanksgiving Day, whew, that was hard. Hanging out with that family, whoo, that was hard. But, uh, but anyway, you know, and all the stress of all that goes around with Thanksgiving, it was still before, there were some things before, there were some things afterwards that made Thanksgiving really good. Makes you feel good, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. And so we've been talking about this idea for, for last week and this week. We're going to talk about thanks living. What does it mean to how can we live thanks living? Pastor Ray talked about that last week. If you missed that, I encourage you to go back and see that and uh, check that out uh, again on YouTube. You can see it on Facebook. Uh, you can go to our website and you'll see it there as well. But here's what you need to know. Thank, Pastor Ray talked about the how, how to do that. I'm going to talk about this idea of why. Why do we do it? Why are we thanks, thankful and therefore able to live with this thankfulness in our lives and, our, and within our hearts? So I want you, I got an exercise for you. Okay, if you're, if you're online, here's what I want you to do. I want you to find a piece of paper uh, and I want you to pull it out, pull it out of a desk somewhere, find, find a piece of paper and write this down. For those of you who are in here in the audience, I want you to pull out your worship guide, find a little spot somewhere in the notes, somewhere. I, got, I want you to write something down, okay? Now, I know some of you are going, I am not going to pull out a piece of paper and write it down. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, I want you to get in your mind these things, all right? So I want you to pick three to five. If it's one, that's great. If it's 10, that's great. However, in this period of time that you do that, but I want you to pick three to five things that you or people that you are thankful for. Three to five things or three to five people or whatever you're thankful for, that's fine. If, you, if you're an animal lover, you're thankful for the animal, that, that's cool too. So whatever your, is on your, it's your list, it's not my list, it's your list. I want you to write those down. Now, we're going to come back to those in just a minute, but write those down. Hang on to those, and we'll, we'll visit those at the end of the service. Thanks living. Pastor talked about how to do that. How, how can I live a life, every, not just a week of Thanksgiving, but every day, how can every day be a life of thanks living? I want to talk about more about the why. Now, also, I need to put this disclaimer out. Some of you guys in, in this room, you're checking Jesus out. You're trying to understand who he is, and you haven't crossed that line of faith, and that's cool. I hope We hope and pray that this is a safe place, and if you're online, the same thing. We hope that this environment is a safe place for you to, to in, inquire of Jesus to find out who he is, and I'm glad that you're here today. Because today, I'm going to peel back the layer just a little bit more to understand why we Christians, why we believers are as weird as we are, okay? <laughs> why we do some of the things that we do and, and why we are wired the way we are. And, and we're going to take a look at that. So, so understand that when I'm talking, I'm talking about why Christians are this way. If you're not a Christian, I'm not expecting you to act this way. I'm not expecting you to think this way. I'm not expecting you to be in this process, but, but to understand who we are as a Christian, and these are some of the things that take place in the context of our lives. And so uh, I'm delving into this why. Why is it that we're supposed to be thankful? Not the how, but the why. What's the why behind the what this morning? And so, so first of all, I want to talk about the, the idea that we are qualified. I, I'm able to be 
be thanks living in my life because I am qualified. If you're taking notes, you can fill that in, qualified. Take a look at this passage, Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. The words are on the screen. They're in your notes. If you've got your uh, Bible with you, that's great. You can open up there. If you've got your phone and you're on your app, uh, just go ahead and open that up. Take a look at that, whatever you want to do. That's great. We're reading out the NIV all day today. First, uh, excuse me, Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. And giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. I want you to be real clear that we give thanks to the Father who has qualified us. If you're taking those, you can circle that. Look at that word, qualified. He qualified me. He qualified you. Now, I want you to see that. We're qualified in Jesus. In, in him we have, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. That comes in Jesus. We have, we have forgiveness in Jesus, and because we have forgiveness in Jesus, we are qualified. That means that I, I can't go to church to make me qualified. I can't clean up my life to make me qualified. I can't get everything right to qualify me. I can't give enough money to qualify myself in God's size. I can't do enough good things. I can't help enough people. I can't serve in any way, shape, or form. There's, I can't, there's a million things I can't do enough of to be qualified. I am qualified by God through Jesus. Got that? Qualified. Now, and some of you believers are going, yeah, I got it. I got it. Why are you saying, why are you driving that so hard? Here's why. Because once I cross the line of faith, I can't read my Bible enough. I can't go to church enough. I can't give enough money. I can't help people enough. I can't serve the community enough. I can't do enough things to qualify me. Because I am always qualified in and through Jesus. And this is where, as believers, we get a little messed up. And there was a time in my life I got messed up. So I was uh, 25 years old. I was in seminary. I was studying to be a preacher. Had it all going on really good, and, and, and things, were, things were great. I'd been a follower of Jesus for about six years, and, and things were really good, and, and, and I'm following him, and I'm, I'm going into ministry. Man, I'm called, okay? I mean, I mean, I don't say that, but that's exciting and cool, and I, I got this special relationship with God that some people think special. And, and my dad gets cancer and dies in a six-month period of time. And I'm going to tell you, I hit a wall. I hit a hard wall. And I pretty, in a, in a disrespectful way, I told God, man, I'm done with this stuff. I can't do this job. And I regret to say that I walked away from it. Well, though, here was the problem. Because, you see, I thought I was being qualified by doing all these good things. I thought that qualified me. I thought because I gave my money, because I gave my time, because I read my Bible, because I went to church, and because I was a preacher, and I did all those things, those qualified me. So I said, if I quit this job, then that means I'm going to quit this faith, too. But you see, God never quit me because I never qualified myself in the first place. And it took me a little while. But I realized that he qualified me, and it wasn't what I did, but it was because of who I am, and I was qualified by God. And yes, I came back to him, obviously. <laughs> but I hit a wall, and that's why I'm excited about this particular point and about this particular message, because I learned so much about God, and I realized I wasn't the center of attention. 
And so God qualifies me, no matter where I'm at, and he qualifies you as well. And so when it becomes a, a time of a thanks living, we are able to live this thankful life, not because you qualify yourself or I qualify me, but because God qualifies each and every one of us in and through Christ Jesus. Whether we're at the beginning of the journey or we're nearing the end of the journey, it doesn't matter. We are always qualified by God through Christ Jesus. Second thing I want you to see, why do I give thanks? Because I'm different. I'm different. Take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Very, for some of us, a very familiar passage. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Now, I could spend about an hour teaching all the nuances of this passage, but for this morning, here, well, here's what I want you to see, that if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, and in verse 18, all this is from God. See, we become a new creation on the inside. Now, it doesn't mean that, that sin goes away and that, that we live this perfect life because there's always this new self and old self, and they're always battling each other and struggling with each other. And we as Christians live in conflict. I'm just going to tell you that straight up. As a counselor, okay, I'm not a professional counselor. Okay, well, I'm a biblical counselor. That's the word I'm looking for. All right. I'm not a qualified counselor. I'm a biblical counselor. Okay, let's don't go there. But anyway, here's the point. From a counseling perspective, it's being in conflict, and we constantly live in conflict with who we are because of this new self and old self. And here's something that I learned really early because when I, was, when I was 16, that's when I crossed the line of faith and I accepted Jesus and my life really changed. But here's the, the, the my, my life did change because, man, it was crazy, but, but my language changed and it didn't change because of me. And, and my attitude changed and it didn't change because of me. It was this, this new creation. My perspective on life changed. My ambitions and the, my hopes and the way I spent my money changed because of Jesus. And that's the new creation. That's the new creature made in us. I mean, I, I had this hard time you know, when, before I accepted Christ. Granted, I was 16. What can you do by the time you're age of 16 to come see me? I'll tell you all the grueling details of all the terrible things I did. However, I will tell you from right here that, I mean, I had a foul mouth. Oh, my gosh. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. Yeah, I can't say that right now, but it was terrible, okay? I mean, I just it was terrible, a terrible language. And, and also, I had this temper, and I, I wouldn't get mad at people. I got mad at myself. And so, early on as a believer, there was, a, there was two passages I learned really quick. One of them was in Ephesians. It says, let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth except for that which is good for the edification of the hearer. And then there's another passage in, in Philippians that says, let your moderation, which is an old King James word for self-control, let your self-control be seen by all the Lord is near. And so I started memorizing those. But, you know, I could memorize all those. This is what I learned kind of in, in the rear when I became 25 years old and hit that wall through my father's death and all that was going on. But I learned about God, how he qualified me. God was changing me. I could learn that scripture all I wanted to, but until I allowed God to change me, I wasn't going to change. You see, there's, that's a key phrase in verse 18. All this is from God. See, I'm a new creature, not because of me, not because of what I do, not because of the things I do, because I go to church and because I tithe and because I, I help people and I serve people and I do all these good things to help other people. I, I'm not a new creature because I do all those things. I do all those things because I am a new creature. Are you tracking with me? Are you getting what I'm throwing down here? 
I mean, I mean, and so there's a place of rest, and there's something to be thankful that God has created a new creature in each and every one of us. That's the motiv- motivating factor. I'm motivated to be different, not because I'm trying, but because I already am. And I just let it come out. I'm this new creature. I'm different because of what God did in me through Jesus, who reconciled me to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, which means we go and help other people get this message. And what's our message? Our message is not come to church, get everything cleaned up, read the Bible, pray, give money, go help other people. No, our message is Jesus. That's our message. I'm different. But I want you to see also that, that why do I give thanks? Because I am selfless. Selfless. See, this is one of those sticking points that, man, we live in conflict. We are conflicted people as Christians. Why? Because, because the very nature of, of sin within itself and in in our society in such a way teaches us that it's all about me. It's all about me. It's about I'm going to spend my money the way I want it. I'm going to get out of it what I want to get out of it. It's all about me, myself, and I. And we're inundated with it all the way. Go buy what you want for you. Take care. Oh, you deserve it. You're entitled. Go do it for yourself because you need it. You deserve this. You deserve that. It's it's all about you. But you see what happens when God brings this new creation in us? Because of that new creature that's in us, we're able to be selfless. Take a look here in Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Let no debt remain outstanding except except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And what other ever... Whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. Bam. Look at that. When you're in debt, you have to pay, right? I mean, I have a house. The bank owns a house, and they let me live in it as long as I can pay them. (laughs) That's how that works, right? Or it does for me. And so I'm in debt to the bank because they let me borrow the money until the day I pay the house off. So there's a debt there to be repaid. And that's not a good debt. And we talk about that in Financial Peace University and because, because we accumulate so much debt and, and how debt is bad. But there is a debt that is very, very good. And this is the debt of love. See, Jesus said this. Jesus said, I've got a brand new command for you. New command. New command. Love one another. And then he quantified it. As I have loved you. Now, think about that just for a minute. Last time I checked, if I mess up, Christian word sin, if I mess up, either on purpose or by accident, if I mess up, I go, God, God, I'm sorry, I messed up. Will you forgive me in Jesus? And God said, yeah, I'll forgive you. And then I work really hard not to do it anymore. Does God throw that up in my face? Does God come up to me and go, you know, Doug, remember last time you did this? Remember when you did that? And, and yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold that against you. Does God do that? No, last time I checked, when we go to God and ask for forgiveness in and through Jesus, we're forgiven, done, clean slate, bam. And Jesus said, listen, if you're going to be my follower, this is, this, is the, this is the command. This is the greatest command. This is the command, love one another. Now, I know he said the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But Jesus said, I got a new command, and that is to love one another. Now, we learn from other places in the New Testament that it's really hard to love one another the way Jesus wants to love one another without us loving God first. And you got to kind of pull all that together. 
But again, I'm talking about how Christians are and why we're to be thankful. And we're to be thankful because we get to live this selfless life. It's not about us. We get to give ourselves away. And that's why we live conflicted. Because life becomes about me, about what I want and about my time. Well, I got to go do this and I got to go do that. I deserve to be here. I deserve to be there. I deserve to have this job. I deserve to own this. I deserve to have that. I deserve to have this lifestyle. And I deserve that. I've worked hard to get what I've got and I deserve all this stuff because it's all about me. And when somebody does me wrong, I deserve to be to hold that against you until you come and grovel and ask for my forgiveness. You see how that works? But we get to be selfless. We don't have to be. We don't have to be. I'm telling you, when you accept Jesus, there's a new creature created in you, and that creature desires for you to be selfless. That's called the Holy Spirit. He is working in you to be selfless. I don't act selfless to be a new creature. I'm a new creature, and therefore I act selfless. And I get to do that. Nobody twists my arm to do that. Nobody makes me. Nobody beats me up. Nobody holds something over here. You better be selfless. I'm going to zap you. No. It's just it's what's inside. It's hardwired in us. And we're able to be thankful for that because that's who we are. We're living congruently with the way we're wired and the way God wants us to live because he's put a new creature in us. And part of this new creature is this continuing debt of love to one another. By the way, speaking of one another, just want to let you know that part of one another is being in a church and, and finding church together. And in the New Testament, we're a church. We're a New Testament church. We come together. And if you're trying to figure out if this place is for you, we have a thing called ownership. We'd love for you to come find out more about our church. That information's in your work, insert in the worship guide and how to get plugged into that. And if you're ready to take a step to become an owner, that's great. But this one another concept and loving one another is crucial in terms of living selflessly. Another aspect of thanks living. The why? Because I am in Jesus. Bottom line. I am in Jesus. Ephesians 2, 8, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork. Here we go. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are in Christ you see, we are thankful. Why? Because we live a life that's in Christ. We're in Him. And we're sealed in Him. He put us in there. We are saved by grace through faith, and that is in Jesus. And so Jesus is in us. Our life is in Him, and He is in us. That's, that's John 15. The Gospel of John, fourth book of the New Testament, chapter 15. We are in Jesus. And because we are in Jesus, this natural outflow comes out of us that we're created for good works. We do good things. Why? Because we serve other people. Why? Because it's hardwired within us to do good things for other people. Why? Because we're selfless. Why? Because we're different. Why? Because we're qualified not on our behalf, but on God's behalf. You see, that's why Jesus is the bottom line. Because we're in in. Christ Jesus. And one of the best ways to reflect that, if you've never been baptized, that is one of the best ways to reflect that you're in Christ Jesus. Do you realize that, that, that when you're in baptismal, when you're, you're going to be baptized, you're, you're in the water, and what you're saying is, I'm identifying myself with Christ. And so this is, this is the old way. This was me before Jesus. I was the boss. It was all about me. I was selfish. Life was all about me. And then I, when, I'm when I'm placed under water, it's as if I'm being buried with Christ. 
And just as Jesus came up out of the tomb and was resurrected to a new life, so when I come up out of the water, I got a brand new life in and through Jesus. That's what baptism means. And by the way, we're going to do baptism in all three of our our Easter services. Information's in your worship guide about that. But baptism reflects that I am in Christ. Strong, strong symbol about being in Jesus. Again, what am I talking about? I'm talking about thanks living and the why behind the what. So, do me a favor. Pull your paper out for you guys online. Pull your paper out right here. Take a look at your top three or five. Take a look at them real quick. If you got them in your brain, that's cool. Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm going to tell you some bad news. If all three of those five things go away, you are in bad trouble. Bad trouble. Because what are you going to be thankful about? See, here's what happened to me. When I was 24 years old, my family was, was on the top of that list. I wasn't married at the time. I was single. And my daddy was on, uh, one of those on that list. And when I was 25, my daddy wasn't on that list anymore, and that blew my world up bad. Bad. If you put your health on there, bad. I'm not saying in a bad way. I'm just saying that if that's all you, is that all you have to be thankful about? If those things are taken away from you, you are in bad trouble because your world is going to be turned upside down and rocked when those things go away from you. That's why as believers, that's why as those who follow Jesus, When we talk about being thankful, we talk about this idea, I'm thankful that I'm qualified. I'm thankful that I'm different. I'm thankful that I'm selfless. I'm thankful that I'm in Jesus. Because those things will never be taken away. Ever. Ever. Be taken away. So here's my hope and prayer for you. Bottom line, what's the point of everything I've been talking about this morning? Thanks living starts when I understand whose I am rather than what I do. I hope that that you'll take these thoughts and you'll carry them out that door. I hope that you'll take these thoughts and carry them out the door. And yes, be thankful for your family. Don't get me wrong. Be thankful for your family. Be thankful for your jobs. Be thankful for what you have. Be thankful for, for, the, for, for what we call blessings. Be thankful for those things. But I implore you, take some of this list and put them in this list. Because if you don't have any of this list on your top five, I'm just going to tell you, when your top five go away, you're in bad trouble. And you're going to hit a wall. And you need Jesus. Now, if you want to accept Jesus, I would love for you to grab me. I'm going to go stand beside this table. Uh, we have a balloon. Uh, we have balloon. We have a table with red balloons out there because that's a celebration time. But if you want to accept Jesus, You're looking in your life going, I need Jesus. Would you meet me out there? Would you do that? Because you're looking at your top five and you're going, man, I'm about to get blowed up. Because I know exactly what he's talking about. If you need Jesus, would you do this? But here's my hope and prayer that you'll take these thoughts and and you will allow them to change your life so that every moment of every day you could live a thanks-living life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you are working in us. And we pray, Lord, that we can live a thanks-living life in Jesus. Amen.
You guys are dismissed. Stand up and turn, look at somebody, say, hey, happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas. <laughs>